which development and uh, multiplication occur to form the multicellular organism. So uh, let us talk about the fundamentals of the evolution. So there are a lot of factors which affect the evolution. So, but here I am talking about the four that is variation, inheritance, selection, and family. So what is variation? All life forms vary genetically within a population. It is the genetic variation upon which selection works. So every individual has a certain kind of variation which enables them to live in the particular environment. Next is the inheritance. Uh, genetic traits are inherited from parents and are passed on to the offspring. Uh, so basically, what are the characters we have, the features we have, we all are made from our parents. So uh, this, uh, this is supposed to inheritance. Now next is the selection. Uh, selection is one of the uh, major factors that affect the evolution. Because in the, in the environment which, uh, where we live, uh, either is favorable or not favorable, it depends upon the selection. So uh, natural selection is also the major uh, uh, factor of the evolution. Now, next is the time. Uh, if we uh, relate the evolution with time, so we can say that the evolution is not a rapid process. It is a very slow process. I mentioned very slight. It can happen in very few generations, but major changes such as speciation often takes a longer period of time. Means the formation of a species, which we call a speciation, it takes a long period of time. Um, moving to the next chapter, theories of evolution. So here I am discussing about the two theories of evolution. First one is uh, Lamarckism, uh, which was given by the scientist Jean Baptiste Lamarck. Um, in his theory, he said that if an organism is using certain character again and again, then this character is uh, developed and it is transferred to the next generation. Um, he, uh, he explained his theory by taking the example of giraffe. Basically, he, uh, he told about the uh, inheritance of acquired character to the future generation. Um, but his theory was uh, not totally uh, right. His theory was refused by the scientist named August Bisman. Uh, what, he, uh, what he did, he took a mice and he cut the tail of the mice to the 21st generation. And he observed that in average generation, a uh, mice uh, with tail was born. There was uh, no mice without tail was born. So he, he concluded that uh, something is present in their gene which is transferred to the next generation. So that's why his theory was refused. Uh, although some of the postulates of his theory was uh, right, that is, uh, um, using certain characters transfer to the next, uh, sorry, using certain characters developed, but uh, not overall his theory was right. So next theory is Darwinism, which was given by the famous uh, scientist Charles Darwin. Uh, he gave the theory of natural selection in his book, that is the uh, origin of a species. Here are the some postulates of the Darwin theory, uh, Darwinian theory, which includes the uh, individual are variable, some of these variations are heritable and uh, individuals that produce the most are those with the most favorable variation. So uh, what did Darwin said? Darwin uh, uh, told about the, uh, Darwin said that organisms are reproducing at very high rate. Uh, for example, mouse, uh, mice produces uh, 6 to 8 babies at a time, uh, even, uh, even fly, sorry, even flies also produces large number of progeny at a time. So he said that organisms reproduce at very high rate. But still there is a remains constant in their population. Why? Because uh, something called competition occur in, in organism which enables them to uh, constant their population. And he also talked about the um, variations. He said that uh, if an organism has the favorable variation for a particular environment, then this variation is in other organisms to reproduce or transfer the genetic material to the next generation. Um, although Darwin was uh, studied about finches, he said that uh, he said that uh, all the finches belong to the uh, common ancestor, but still they have the variations due to the environmental factors. Now, apart from this. There are some evidences of evolution which include the fossils, homologous organ, anaerobic organ, and vestigial organ. So here um, we 
uh, the major uh, the major factor which should be the mind the uh, evidence of aggression is the vestigial organ because they uh, they are the functional in our ancestors but uh, today nowadays they are not functional is in a slightly intimate membrane which are present over here eyes and the bony form appendix they are also the common evidence of evolution and there are a lot of evidences which affect the evolution now the next is the moving to the application of evolution uh, so one of the major application of evolution is artificial selection uh, artificial selection basically means the identification of desirable traits uh, from organisms or uh, from organisms and uh, it is used to create the new species of organism and it, it is also called the selective breeding uh, farmers have been used this technique from uh, thousands of years to uh, create the new species Uh, of uh, to create the new species like the uh, uh, wild cabbage uh, uh, from wild cabbage we created the new species of uh, uh, red cabbage broccoli cauliflower corduroy and kale and various top species are uh, uh, also formed from by using this, this technique that is artificial selection so it is the major advantage for regarding evolution as i told you about uh, all the uh, evolution about the uh, sorry evidences applications theories so now here is something interesting that is uh, human evolution how we evolved now uh, we have evolved from the common ancestor that is uh, dryopithecus who was the common ancestor of apes and now modern day human so here some of the species of the species uh, from dryopithecus to modern day humans between the these are dromedaries or australopithecus homo habilis homo erectus which uh, uh, give rise to the two species of human that is homo sapiens neanderthal and homo sapiens fossilis and now uh, and we the uh, modern species that is homo sapiens we uh, we are formed from the homo sapiens fossilis now now dromedaries i as i told you they were the common ancestor of humans and apes they were found as uh, fossil in miocene form and they are totally arboreal uh, they give rise to the another species of human that is dromedaries and uh, dromedaries dromedaries only female fossils were found which was 4 feet in height now next species is australopithecus um, australopithecus are uh, they uh, they supposed to have a bipedal locomotion and uh, they were the first hominid and semi erect posture Um, they were the first hominid. Uh, why they are called uh, hominid? Because something human-like features they they have. That's why they are called the uh, hominid. Now they give rise to the next species of human that is Homo habilis. Homo habilis uh, was the most skillful man, and they were the first uh, species of human who got the tag of Homo because majority of characters are uh, resemble. they have the ability to make the tools and they have cooperative hunting gathering and sharing the food <coughs> they rise to the another species of human that is homo erectus um, and the homo erectus uh, again give rise to two species of humans that is homo sapiens neanderthals and homo sapiens fossils homo sapiens neanderthal is supposed to uh, 1.7 uh, meter tall they have a uh, happy or bulky body <coughs> Some regards the ancestor of modern day human that is Homo sapiens, but they are not the modern. They are not the ancestor. They actually they are the natives of uh, nowadays human. Next is the Homo sapiens fossils. They are called the Homo manu. Uh, they have rise to the modern uh, man some forty thousand years ago. Now, now here is something interesting that is uh, uh, recently I studied. physician named Stanley Bauer he received the uh, Nobel prize in the year of October 2022 for physiology or medicine for concerning the genomes of the neanderthals as i told you they were the um, uh, native of our own species that is homo sapiens and um, paleo is known as one of the founder of paleo genomics which uh, uses the genetics to study early humans and ancient population Now, these uh, discoveries have generated us several better understanding about the evolution.
professionally and professionally relationship and uh, his discoveries help us to know that younger girls have uh, interpreted the uh, homo sapiens around 1.4% of genome of the people in most of the part of the world of neanderthal ancestry and he also made the sensational discovery of uh, uh, extinct species that is denisovans and now here is the conclusion that is uh, uh, firstly we can say that uh, evolution is a divergent process because when the species give rise to the numerous species it is estimated that human beings are originated in africa and also the genetic food food print can be traced to this continent uh, for several needs they can adapt to, to several environments and uh, evolution speaks how living things are changing today and how modern living things descended from ancient life and that no longer exist on earth as living things evolve they generally become better suited for the environment this is why because they adapt certain type of uh, adaptation according to the need of the environment that's all thank you